no shortage of success stories from El Paso, especially when it comes to kids who make it out of the barrio into the big leagues, such as the case with five kids from Isleta High School. They made history 20 years ago when they became the largest group of Hispanics ever to be accepted to MIT from one public school. It was my special assignment to track them down 20 years later. That's the tardy bell. The halls of Isleta High School are not the same. What's the amplitude of a wave? They are changed forever since the day the Fab Five were thrown into the national spotlight. For them, it remains a great but terrifying memory. Alicia Ayala, Isleta High School valedictorian, class of 1992, recalls being a teenager and the astronomical expectations and pressures fixated on the five barrio kids who made straight A's in the classroom and now had to make big decisions. My only regret would be that at the time, you know, I was 18, I was a senior, I, I don't think I was strong enough to just say, you know, this is what it's going to be, this is what I've decided. Of the Fab Five, Alicia was the only one who did not accept MIT's acceptance offer and financial help. Alicia's dad was a retired janitor. Paul Kane, who guided the Fab Five through their legendary high school academic achievements, remains at Isleta High School today. Valedictorian of the class of 92. Anyone who was around then remembers it was a huge story that her family would not let her leave home to go away to college because she was a Hispanic female. The fears of the unknown were something the close-knit group of overachievers and their families shared. They all came from working class families with moderate to low income. It was definitely scary. You know, I hadn't, I hadn't been to a big city before. Um, I hadn't traveled much. David Villarreal salutatorian of 1992, and the oldest of seven children. You know, I remember laying in my temporary dorm room the first night I'm there, staring at the ceiling, uh, just wondering if, if it was the right decision. The Isana High School Indians were about 2,500 miles off the reservation, away from home. You know, you go from being one of the top kids at your school to a place where everyone's, everyone was the top kid at their school. David, however, was different. He could have also attended college on an athletic scholarship. I remember vividly in one of the interviews that was done at the time, a gentleman, newspaper reporter, I think, because he was writing everything, he asked David which was more important to him, his varsity basketball letter or his varsity letter for IQ Academic Decathlon. And David looked at him and said, you're crazy. Of course it's IQ, because it's so much fun. All the way is a starter on a basketball team. 20 years later, David shares a sense of gratitude and humility. It's great that I went to MIT, but I think, um, you know, in the end, it, it's not about where you went to school. It's, you know, setting goals for yourself and, and doing what you can uh, to meet those goals and to do what you love to do. David graduated MIT, married a fellow Isleta High School Indian attending Vassar, and went on to become vice president of Johnson & Johnson. Today... A ventricular assist device, or VAD, such as the HeartMate. David is the senior engineer for Thoratic Corporation in San Francisco, developing one-of-a-kind life-saving heart transplant devices. <laughs> Alicia Ayala graduated UTEP, earned her PhD from UNM, and went on to develop superconductors at Sandia National Labs before moving on to Los Alamos National Labs. Liliana Ramirez was a first-generation immigrant. She had only learned to speak English the year before being accepted to MIT. Those who knew her say she struggled with the language barrier at the university, and no one knows if she finished or where she went. Enrique Arzaga was the super techie of the group. In those days, computers are, weren't, even then, are not anything like they are now. And I taught a computer science class, and he was really into the computer science. And it gave him an opportunity to express himself. He was kind of a clown. He was hilarious. Always laughing. Enrique Arzaga grew up here on Buena Park Street. He went to MIT and then left to finish at Park University. He eventually made his way back to El Paso and opened a business called Desert Tech. Through his parents, he declined to be interviewed. Jesus Martinez left Isleta High School for MIT, apparently never to return for good. At last word, he's working for Apple in Portland, and although we couldn't reach him for comments, Mr. Kane said he's an extremely hard worker. Jesus had a very difficult family life. 
his mom worked nights cleaning offices and he would often go help her clean the offices and so on. The next section is wave interference. We're not well known for our academic um, accomplishments. So to have five students from this school go to MIT and have full ride scholarships, it's a big deal. So I raise your hand and leave it up again if you are inspired by the story of the five MIT kids that Mr. Kane told you about. Each of the 16 kids in Mr. Kane's applied physics class has been accepted or has plans to attend college. Alexis will attend Sam Houston. Lawrence Henderson will go pre-law at UTEP. It lets us know that we could do it. <laughs> like, it's not at all impossible. It's not at all. It, it may be challenging, but we can do it. Everybody ever hear of Sir Isaac Newton? Alicia and David are both surprised their story remains an inspiration at Isleta High School, and both say their most difficult lessons in life had nothing to do with perpendicular lines, velocity, and frequency. Instead of praising their degrees, they both credit their successes to overcoming life's little mistakes and failures. Really think about what you're doing. Don't, don't see the glamour in things. Think about what you really want to do and what is going to make you happy. Alicia is now days away from earning yet another degree in elementary school education, where she can now work with children. It doesn't matter where you went, it's, it's kind of where you end up at the end. It ends up, David comes home to El Paso all the time to visit. And Mr. Kane? We're talking about waves. 38 years later, he's at the same high school, and no one can convince him to retire. Some of these young people come from really tragic circumstances. And yet they come to school every day, they come to learn, they come with hopes and dreams. One more time, go. By the way, administrators at MIT said affirmative action had nothing to do with the selection of the Fab Five. If I hear from Enrique, Jesus, or Liliana, I'll update you on my fan page, which you can find through our website at kfoxtv.com. John? An amazing